Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In one of the last episodes I explained the way to filter the carbon dioxide out of your base. And for that I received a comment to actually use mechanized airlocks instead and just delete the carbon dioxide. And that made me think how this could actually work. So one of the most important uh, things about mechanized airlocks is that they actually operate without being attached to uh, power. As you can see here, if you attach power to it and just open and close, it goes very fast. And then I'm gonna demolish the uh, power input to it. As you can see, this little symbol occurs and still the mechanized airlock will work just a little slower as you can see here but that's not an issue also when I open and close you notice something here that when the door is being closed you see that uh, gases around it are pushed away from the mechanized airlock and when I open it gases are sucked into the these two tiles actually and yeah that's basically the mechanic we're gonna use for deletion of uh, gases Let's seal this in for a moment. As you can see now, or at least make it double wall. And we gonna make a vacuum. Uh, fill vacuum. So now we have a vacuum uh, on the outer uh, room. And in the inner room, you can see there's little amounts of carbon dioxide above the mechanized airlock. That's 2.5 kilograms per tile. What will actually happen when I close the door now? Because the gas can't go anywhere. Let's see. So in the closed mode, you can see there's no gases available around here and also not around it. And when I reopen the door, there's still a vacuum. So we basically deleted the carbon dioxide from the asteroid. And that's a very useful mechanic to use. So I'm simulating some kind of a little base here. Let's imagine this would be your bedrooms and your kitchen and whatever you have in your base. And right at the bottom of your base, there's this little sink. Remember, carbon dioxide will drop down to the bottom of your base. And we have four mechanized airlocks. Uh, these are attached to some little automations, as you can see here. The first door has a different automation than the other three. That's important to notice. The first one is just uh, connected to this timer sensor. I've set that to 1010. You can also do 1515 or something like that. Uh, the exact numbers um, are not that important. And because of that, the mechanized airlock is opening and closing every 10 seconds, as you can see here. Now the bottom three uh, mechanized airlocks are connected to the same automation but behind the timer sensor there's a buffer gate. We are basically delaying, delaying the timer sensor signal by just three seconds. So this way we will always have the door on top close first and three seconds after the bottom doors will close. So this way we make sure that there is a constant stream of uh, carbon dioxide in this case down to these three uh, mechanized airlocks and then the top mechanized air airlock will close first and in this moment in this situation there's carbon dioxide trapped into these tiles and will be deleted right after it and we can leave this constantly running uh, that's not an issue but let's see how this actually uh, will work so I'm gonna put a huge amount of carbon dioxide into this room now. Let's say 100 kilograms per tile. Let's check. Yeah, we have a huge pressure now. As you can see, the carbon dioxide is sucked into these three tiles and therefore deleted. So as you can see, the gas pressure has already dropped by, yeah, depending on where you measure it, up to six, seven, even 20 kilograms down here. So this way we will constantly uh, keep deleting the carbon dioxide. I can't give you an uh, exact measurement of how much carbon dioxide is deleted this way because it obviously depends on the pressure in the room. It will always 
um, destroy a certain percentage of the gas pressure in this room actually. Now, if you have this at the bottom of your base, you might be worried about your duplicants. Let's check what happens when we just spawn a duplicant on top on it, of it. As you can see, Jean is safe. <laughs> she can just move around there. She's not falling into it. Of course, it would be smarter, smarter to just uh, put some, I don't know, airflow tiles, for instance, on top of it. So that way nothing else can enter it. Also, we're gonna wait until Jean is dead, so that way we can see what will happen with debris that is dropping in there on top uh, of the airlocks. So, I'm sorry Jean, but you have to be part of this exp experiment now. Yeah, and there she passed away. And it seems like the debris is also not falling down, so it will be very easy to pick this up. There's no um, deletion of other materials down there. Also what I'm gonna show is if you have um, a lot of liquids in your base, for instance nuclear waste, and you brush some of that on top. Let's see how this will work. As you can see the nuclear waste is also being deleted as of um, any other liquid would be deleted as well by this mechanism. Maybe if you have too much of <laughs> any liquid you can yeah, delete it uh, throughout this method. And then I have uh, something for the end of this video as well. Um, I've set up a little room with five petroleum generators here. They are being fed by a single liquid pump and a lot of petroleum over here. We're just gonna start the petroleum generators there. And as you can see, they don't have a specific exit or output for carbon dioxide. They just put the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere around it. So therefore the pressure in this room will grow and grow endlessly or we just keep destroying the carbon dioxide as well. But first of all, let's make sure that we do not destroy um, the polluted water we also received, because that one could be useful. I've created a little sink on the side here, that way I make sure that every bit of liquid is dropping down there, and I have very little automation set up as well. As you can see, the hydrogen, uh, or the, the hydro sensor is detecting a pressure of above 50 kilograms and then activates the pump for a short period. That way we can just pump the uh, polluted water away. What's gonna happen with the carbon dioxide here? As you can see, uh, these tiles are covered with liquids, so no airflow here. But there's a, s a small path on the side here and also a small path here. So the carbon will just enter the bottom rooms and as you can see, pretty much the same mechanism here. I have a lot of um, mechanized airlocks down here and I've got one, uh, some of them on top. So the uh, mechanized airlocks on top of it will close first always, as you can see. Now this room is sealed and therefore we will destroy all the gases inside there. That is pretty much it. So this way we can, um, yeah, destroy carbon dioxide without investing any power or cleaning it up anyway. Also the automation is the same. We have a timer sensor for the uh, yeah, mechanized airlocks which are used for sealing and we have a buffer gate in between three seconds as well for the mechanized airlocks which will actually delete the carbon. So. I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, I would appreciate if you guys subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.